start recording now. Welcome to Oxbridge College Open Day session for Building Services Engineering and Motor Vehicle Maintenance. If you haven't registered for the Open Day, then you can do it now by visiting Open Day registration link, which is available in the chat box in a moment, so that we can send you a recording of the session to watch it again in your own time or keep you updated with information about the college. If you have any questions, please type them into the chat box. We will aim to answer them at the end of the session. I will now hand you over to my colleague, Mark, who will talk about building services engineering at Oxbridge College. Over to you, Mark. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon and welcome to the construction area of the School of Engineering, Technology and Innovation. Uh, my name is Mark Milner, the section manager of the construction facility. Um, both myself and Amin, our electrical course team leader, will give you an insight into the de departmental activities. Okay, uh, the, the construction area um, consists of uh, three basic areas. That's the electrical installation, uh, building services and plumbing. Uh, and within that, the course delivery uh, consists of a level two diploma in electrical installation, a level three diploma. Uh, we also start that uh, journey with the level one certificate access to building services, which is a foundation course. Uh, coupled with that, uh, the plumbing level two and level three uh, courses. And then finally, the building services has a route. So you can join at any time really from the level one to three, uh, level two BTEC, level three BTEC, uh, going on to HNC level four and level five uh, building services. Uh, these courses are suited primarily, uh, primarily to those who wish to both eventually enter the construction industry uh, or the facilities maintenance uh, areas, and uh, those who wish to gain the basic practical skill sets of each trade and the underpinning theory. Um, within the course programs, you'll learn fundamental tradecraft operations, for example, basic power lighting circuits, wiring systems, um, plumbing systems such as hot and cold water distribution, sanitary and heating systems, and basic refrigeration, plumbing and electrical within the building services units. Uh, the student activities are all practiced and then finally assessed by the respective tutors in the workshop, thus giving a chance to demonstrate the acquired skills to industry standards. Um, behind this, uh, the course uh, structures you see here, we have a, a, a construction team um, headed up by the head of school, Neil Benjamin Miller, uh, myself, the section manager, and then I'm supported by the three course team leaders for each of the aforementioned areas. And supporting them in turn are the lecturers who all bring uh, vast amounts of experience to the uh, programs. They've, uh, the, all the tutors have worked in education and or industry before. Um, and they, this enhances the student learning process uh, with all their experiences. I'll now pass you over to Amin, our CTL, uh, who will illustrate the uh, progression routes through the various course programs. Um, thanks, Mark. <clears throat> our aim is to create a choice and an opportunity for all students to gain the qualification to progress progress onto further or higher education. For example, in order to become an electrician, plumber, or business services engineer, the entry requirements for level two would be you, for you to have four GCSEs, grade three, and from there you could then progress to level three. For example, the electrical insulation, as a school leaver, you need four GCSEs, grades three, you move on to level one, Diploma electrical installation, progress onto level three electrical installation, and hopefully into deployment or an apprenticeship. Very similar routes as a plumber, as a school leaver, you go into level two diploma, level three diploma in plumbing, and hopefully into deployment or an apprentice. The construction is slightly different to to electrical and uh, plumbing. As a school level, you'll enter uh, level one, City and Gills Building Services, level one, then you go to level two, BTEC, level three, and then level four, HNC, and level five, HND. You can also, as an external applicant, provided you have the correct grades seven and eight, you can jump straight onto level three diploma. Here are units details for the BTEC National Certificate showing the mandatory core and specialist units. And here are also the details showing the BTEC National uh, Higher National Diploma showing again the core and specialist units. 
Okay, in the next slide, uh, we uh, year on year since uh, 1718, the progression, um, sorry, the retention and achievement rates have increased uh, quite dramatically uh, to, to the point where we are today. Um, here in this slide, you'll see that the achievement now, um, well, for all of the discipline areas that I've mentioned before, are all well above national average. Um, here, for example, the electrical is 96.2 for uh, 7.92 uh, for uh, retention and 96.5 for achievement. Um, similar story with the plumbing, well above the national average. Um, and also, uh, in this particular case, of building services level three is a, a similar story. We have heavily invested in providing our students with the latest facilities with, 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 which simulate those used in this industry and amongst some of the best in the country. We use specialist tools and equipment widely used within the industry, as you can see. Go around this workshop, this electrical installation workshop. In front of you, we have simulation of test rigs that the level three students practice their testing on. Go around with A-frames. We've got some level two electrical installation tasks that learners learn all types of testing. Going around a bit further, we've got advanced A-frames that if you want to go further into, into electrical field, we have inspection testing. And also we've got various types of bays at level three. In front, in front of you, you'll see a display is a level three simulation test board which students learn and gain the necessary skills to undertake test inspection, diagnostics, and fault finding using the latest meters. We always strive in providing our students with the knowledge and expertise needed in their chosen field. Just picking up from the sort of workshop areas, here's uh, some examples of uh, some of our level two students undertaking work in the bays and on uh, little rigs um, and they're showing here that they're proud of their work. They do this work ready for their final assessments, which are uh, undertaken within the workshop by the tutors. Um, that's the level twos. Here we go with the level threes. We've got some, it gets slightly more advanced, slightly more technical for them, but here them uh, displaying some of their finished work. And lastly, with the plumbing and building services, um, here's some of the guys preparing um, set pieces for their portfolio. Uh, and some bay work there for the level one building services. And I should mention that the building services level one contains the three elements, that's plumbing, electrical, and refrigeration. Not only do the students study academically and practical with us, we also arrange with our partner employers, quality in industrial work placements, arranging from one week up to the new sufficient industry placements of up to a minimum of 45 working days. In addition, we also arrange on-site visits and visiting professional speakers to, to students so students can, while studying, get a real-time insight on how their chosen industry functions and where they can imagine find themselves in the future. We also arrange virtual work placement due to COVID-19 restrictions with local employers such as Heathrow Airport and construction companies to give students a live insight into their industry. To meet the con con continual skill demand within the construction industry and our, st and our students are at the very heart of what we do, so staff do the utmost, utmost to prepare them for a bright future in gaining valuable skills to improve their job prospects. If we now look at the top 10 construction jobs in the UK, you can see we offer a comp comprehensive range of qualifications to meet that demand. For example, electrician or electrical fitters or plumbers. In addition to the earnings that can be obtained within the vocational trade areas and aligned to those higher building services qualification, you can see here a summary of salaries that can be potentially achieved. For example, if you would like to become a building sur sur surveyor, starting salary 20, 22K to 70K also a project manager starting salary, salary of up to 20,000 to 70K. So with some of our students, uh, um, some of the uh, joining students at level one actually um, have the opportunity to start level one and progress right the way through, actually potentially to level five. Um, here's a case in point, uh, Fanzel, who is one of my students last year, 
Uh, overall, an excellent student. He started at level one, not knowing anything about electrical work, finally leaving with a level three diploma. Um, and that will serve him well in, when he goes into this sort of chosen area of the electrical industry, for example, and you can see his little testament there. And lastly, we like to, um, you know, throughout the academic year, we, we, we acknowledge and award prizes to those students uh, during the actual academic year, uh, year for those students who show excellent attitude, commitment and work ethic to their course. But here you'll see there's a, we have an annual award ceremony, COVID permitting, uh, usually held at the um, Beck Theatre, which is local here. And this really celebrates successes and how proud of we are of some of our wonderful high achieving students. Uh, and these, these students have consistently excelled throughout their time here at Uxbridge. And, and a few names, and I can see a few people in the, the students of mine there, have gone on to work some of the biggest names in industry, which is uh, really uh, rewarding for us as tutors. Okay, uh, that's the end of our presentation. I'd like to hand over to uh, Scott and Dermot in Eng uh, Motor Vehicle, NGTI. Uh, over to you, Scott. Hi, everyone. Um... Okay, hi everyone. Uh, my name's Scott. Um, I'm the section manager of Motor Vehicle. Uh, this is Dermot. He's uh, the course team leader here at uh, Uxbridge College Motor Vehicle. Um, we just want to today really go through uh, what we offer on our motor vehicle course. Um, I think, you know, what, what we've got here and what we offer is a very wide range, uh, starting from level one and working its way all the way through up to, to level three and then on to uh, apprenticeships as well. Um, so when, when you first come into us, uh, most people join motor vehicle on a level one course. Uh, we are City and Guilds based, so the City and Guilds uh, are our um, awarding body. Um, everyone starts on level one. Uh, the reason for this is because uh, vehicles are very dangerous um, and everyone has to do a health and safety element when they very first come into uh, the industry. Um, once you pass at level one, then obviously, you know, progression routes, as you can see at the bottom there, are into our level two um, full-time courses, into employment and also into an apprenticeships, which we run here at Uxbridge College as well. Um, the, the start dates for this uh, year is going to be September enrolment and the course runs right the way through till uh, July next year. Okay, so with the, uh, with the course unit sense, so the things you will be covering on level one, um, one of the most important things there is health and safety, um, being in a workshop, which is a very uh, big environment to be in. Uh, we run through health and safety of being at work, working on vehicles, um, making sure you're safe, but others around you are safe as well. Uh, we then moved on to the introduction to vehicle technology. Um, this is where we start introducing you to, to vehicles um, and parts of the vehicle. Um, we will also be looking at uh, tooling, um, different constructions of vehicles. So we'll be looking at things like uh, the metal parts of the vehicle and the plastic parts of the vehicle and why they're made as well. Um, and then we'll be moving on to things like your braking systems. Uh, so we'll be looking at the complete braking system on a vehicle um, and then we'll show you in a minute as we go through some of the slides what you'll be doing with, within the workshops. Um, and then we'll also be looking at routine maintenance of, of vehicles as well on the level one course. All right, guys, so I think they're showing us a few bits that the guys are doing here. So there's an engineering element to level one and level two. You know, whether it's uh, making, you know, perhaps a metal boat at level one or a, a metal car, and then they'll make a more useful tool at level two, you know, perhaps a brake clamp. So many of our guys have, uh, you know, kept these tools, you know, throughout their, throughout their sort of careers. You know, I remember making something when I was young that I've still got in my toolbox now. And this is the, the kind of quality we try and teach them because cars are engineered to very fine tolerances and they have to learn these skills, no matter whatever level they start at. So, you know, a little bit more basic at level one, then it gets a little bit more complicated at level two. So you can see there, measuring, marking, cutting, filing, thread tapping, you know, all very, very useful skills for the motor trade. Okay, next slide, please. 
Okay, so yeah, it's going on again. The health and safety element never goes away because they're working with equipment that can, you know, can effectively kill them. So we, we, we've got to make sure that, you know, if we start with uh, 16, 18, 20 learners, we want to finish with the same number. So up here they're operating a pillar drill. You know, same again. Hopefully all the guys are wearing their PPE, got their goggles on. Okay, we can go next slide. Okay, oh, this is quite nice. This is one year where the guys, uh, they started off at level one doing a, a small uh, metalwork task. On the right, you can see they made a boat. They'll put their ID down. They'll show evidence of it. Ho hopefully they'll stamp their initials on it. So it'll comply to all the awarding body criteria. And on the left, we took some of the groups just a little stage further, you know, got them to, you know, mount them on a plinth, something that they can sort of take home, show the parents, and obviously automotive related. Okay, next slide, please. Well, they, these guys are looking quite proud. I'm trying to look what they've made there. Oh, this is their boats. So yeah, so some of these guys have gone on now to level two uh, with us and some of them, there's a new level three course coming up. I'm sure Scott might mention it a little later, even full time. So we can do level three uh, apprenticeship and there may be opportunities for some of these guys that feel they need the extra learning at level three as well. But you can clearly see they've been enjoying their work and they're, they're, you know, they've been getting involved in the workshops. Okay, next slide, please. Another team effort there. So they've all sort of got down, you know, they've, they're showing us you know, a collective of uh, things that they made. You know, quite, a good, quite a good cohort this, this particular year. And so nearly all of these guys came back for level two. Okay, moving on, please. So now they're taking it that little bit further, you know, how can we transfer these skills into uh, the automotive trade, trade? So, you know, they're encouraged to make a brake pipe, uh, then the brake pipe will be fitted onto a car and they'll learn how to bleed brakes. So we're gradually showing them how we can sort of take it just that step further, you know, from something that looks you know, reasonably uh, basic as an ornament that they're going to take home, albeit it may have taken them weeks to make, and then teaching them how you transfer those skills onto a motor vehicle. Okay, next slide, please. Right, they're moving that one step further. It looks like now that they're uh, safely learning how to you know, take wheels off, using pneumatic trick tools, uh, taking off brake parts, learning how to measure them. You know, so these are uh, service skills that they're going to need in any garage that they go into. Okay, moving on, next, next slide, please. So there's more maintenance procedures here. The guys are working underneath the car, I think there's a young lady there as well, still sort of inspecting, it looks like they're doing an old, an old change there. So same again, these are all transferable skills straight into industry. The next slide, please. Yeah, same again. So the guys are still on routine maintenance. Uh, looks like they're you know, it's changing an air filter there on the left, perhaps wheels getting spun back up there and some general checks on the on the right side there. Okay, next slide, please. And we quite often use this as a uh, an optional unit, but all the it, it, it's good practice, good practice to be working on a car. Um, at the end of the day, you clean it, you they learn respect for vehicles, learn respect for uh, customers' property, and you know, going into the workplace, it'll, that'll be an expectation of them as well. So we teach them how to clean cars properly, clean the inside, and show respect for the vehicles. So that, again, a, a truly transferable skill into industry. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, and the guys again, it's like they're getting 
I'll do this one if you want. Oh, so, that was yeah. A French so, so yeah, so this this is uh, to do with the work experience that we try and get the guys out on. Um, so you've seen some of the the students working in in the workshops here. Uh, we have three fully equipped um, up to industry standard workshops which have modern cars and modern technology. Um, but there is no substitute for going out and, and seeing what the real world is like. Uh, we work with a lot of local companies, a lot of local garages. Um, and these are just some examples of some of our students that have been out um, into some of these garages just to gain vital work experience. Um, we try and get most of our students out onto work experience. Um, if they can't get out onto work experience, we try and, do, try and do some internal work experience as well, just so they can gain uh, you know, that, that vital um, industry knowledge, you know, what it would actually be like working from, you know, eight in the morning to six at night, um, you know, and, and getting customers' cars ready. Uh, so we, we try and promote that as well with, within the college. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, and again, a bit like the plumbing, we like to, um, you know, do our star performers. We do have awards throughout the year. Um, not just for one thing, we, we give awards for sometimes a, a piece of work that's been really well produced, um, perhaps really good attendance and punctuality. Um, and then also sometimes we have our, our star performers um, like Ronnie here, um, you know, who went above and beyond really in, in his course. Um, and what was really nice is, is Ronnie went on to gain employment actually out of this uh, worked with one of our local garages um, and has actually come back on and just completed his level two apprenticeship um, and has just signed up for his level three apprenticeship. So, uh, you know, it goes to show that, you know, we managed to get him his, his job through the college and, and progress him on to the level three. Um, so, so he's doing really well. So it just goes to show a bit of hard work and determination really does, does pay off. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, and, and you know, again, you know, like, like in, in what Mark was saying, the reason that we do this isn't just because we want to put on a course, it's because that there is a very big shortage of skilled technicians out there in, in the motor industry. Um, you know, the motor industry there employs more than 800,000 people within the UK alone. Um, we have about 180,000 technicians. Uh, but fewer than 1,600 now are, are trained or qualified to work on electric vehicles. Um, and, and as a college, we see this as a, as a skills gap. Um, it's something that we are working towards um, as you go up the courses of bringing in electric vehicle. We've just purchased an electric vehicle and some electric vehicle rigs, um, and we're looking to put on electric vehicle courses. Um, and as Dermot mentioned, we're looking at, at possibly running a level three full-time course as well, which will give you extra uh, room for progression uh, from, from the level one and level two. So, you, you know, there really are a lot of um, outlets that you can get from doing this course. Um, you, you know, we work, like I say, with a lot of garages within the local areas, um, you know, and I know that there is a skill shortage out there um, of qualified technicians, which is, you know, what we're here to help you help you get qualified. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, and this just goes to show uh, the, the career path as well. Um, so sort of straight from school, you can come into uh, our level one program. Um, and from there, you can go on to the level two. Um, and then, you know, you could gain um, employment as a, a skilled fitter, uh, like semi-skilled employment. Um, or you could then move on to our, our level three full-time program or into our apprenticeship program. Uh, which we do too. We do an intermediate and advanced apprenticeship program, which would then lead you into skilled employment, which obviously the, the higher up the ladder you go and the, the more qualified you get, obviously the more money potentially that you can earn. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so I'd just like to say from, from Motor Vehicle, it's, it's a very uh, team effort here. Um, everyone in Motor Vehicle is from industry. Uh, everyone has got a vast, vast knowledge of, of motor vehicle. Um, we do try and, and buy the latest equipment uh, for you to be working on within the, the workshops. Um, you know, and we, we, you know, every student matters. Every student that comes here, we want to see progress. We put that effort into every student. And, you know, we, we hope by viewing this virtual open day that it would give you some interest in motor vehicle. 
um, and hopefully when the colleges are able to open a little bit more, you know, we'd be more than welcome to have you to come in and see the facilities that we have here. Okay, thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Scott. Uh, we hope this, you found this session useful. We will pick up some questions in the chat if anybody has any questions. I'll just give a couple of uh, 30, uh, one minute just to see if there's anybody because we roll on to next session and just being mindful of time. And if you have any questions which you can think of, can't think of now, but you want to send it later, please email inquiries at oxbridgecollege.ac.uk. And uh, my colleague has also put on uh, some valuable information in the chat box if you want to access those informations about how to apply, uh, courses to look at, uh, full-time guides. Uh, it's all in the chat box if you want to access that. I can't see any questions at the moment, guys. So shall we just wrap up for today? Okay. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, everybody, for attending. And we hope to see you soon in Oxbridge College. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye now. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.